Twilight Sparkle is a hero. Equestria honored her with this mural depicting her sacrifice. I did a whole video about what this mural means and what exactly Twilight did to save Equestria. But the question remains, what did Twilight save Equestria from? When Sunny reunited the tribes and the crystals, something mysterious happened. Sunny's Star Scout became an alicorn of sorts. Instead of physical horn and wings like Twilight had, these were glowing outlines of a horn and wings. We didn't get to see the horn in action, but the wings were fully functional. In this moment, Sunny seemed to possess alicorn magic. Her becoming an alicorn was surprising to a lot of people, but not to me. Some were saying that Sunny didn't do enough to earn becoming an alicorn, as if flurry freaking heart doesn't exist. No, so this fits perfectly in line with my idea of how alicorns work. I still stand by that video, so check it out for more details, but basically, to become an alicorn, you need to contain magic from all three tribes. This describes every alicorn ascension we've seen, from Twilight to Cozy Glow, Sunny included. She was surrounded by magic from each tribe held in each crystal, spinning around her and lifting her into the air until the transformation was complete. It fits the theory to a T. The surprising thing here isn't that Sunny became an alicorn, it's that she did didn't become an alicorn, not really. There's nothing to suggest this was a permanent upgrade. And even if it was, all the other alicorns gained physical wings and horns. This looks more like a temporary alicorn power-up. Why didn't Sunny become a full-fledged alicorn like even Cozy Glow was able to? Maybe it's a consequence of how things in Equestria have changed over time, but I want to know how they changed. What happened to Equestria? Because we've never seen anything like this before. Or maybe we have. Our story starts with Twilight Sparkle, but not the one you're thinking of, her doppelganger from the human world. Throughout the friendship games, Twilight Sparkle's pendant was drawing in magic from each of the main six. When she absorbed it all, she became Midnight Sparkle, sporting physical wings and a horn. Later, magic from the five channeled through the pendant into Sunset Shimmer, transforming her as well. But her wings and horns weren't physical. They were just magical outlines like Sunny had. Huh. Between Sunset and Sunny, the similarities here are bizarre. Temporary power-ups that give you non-physical glowing wings and a horn? These two totally different events in two totally different worlds shouldn't be so similar. Unless the worlds aren't so different anymore. In my The Fate of Twilight Sparkle video, I took notice of how Equestria needs artifacts to have magic now. It didn't used to, but now it does. We know from Chancellor Naysay that Equestria's most potent magic is housed in its artifacts. This is why when Cozy Glow drained Equestria's magic, Star Swirl accurately predicted that artifact magic would last the longest. This led me to conclude that the tribe's crystals were artifacts created as a response to some sort of magical crisis. But how incredibly specific, right? A magical crisis? Crisis, I might as well just say a thing happened. Yes, my video explains the mural, the crystals, and Twilight's connection to it all, but that's really only half an answer. What was the crisis? We know this isn't another Cozy Glow situation. She was draining all the magic. Even the artifacts were beginning to sputter on the brink of death, whereas the tribe's crystals here seem to be working just fine. This tells us Equestria still has some magic, so what's going on here? To understand the magical change that happened to Equestria, we need to understand understand magic. Yes, trying to understand magic is what led Twilight Sparkle to become Midnight Sparkle, but the fact that magic is something Twilight could measure and detect tells us it's understandable, at least to an extent. The most important thing about magic that I've been able to discern is that it seems to behave like energy. It follows the first law of thermodynamics, aka conservation of energy. Notice how magic has never clearly been created or destroyed, only drawn from, converted from one form to another, or transported somewhere else. That's why the pillars dealt with the sirens and the pony of shadow by taking them elsewhere. Even Cozy Glow's magic circle was designed to send Equestria's magic to another realm and not get rid of it altogether. So in the future, Equestria couldn't have just lost magic, it must have gone somewhere. And if magic also follows the second law of thermodynamics, I think I know where it went. 
Basically, the second law states that if you have differences in energy in the same area, they'll even out until it reaches equilibrium, peak entropy. Ice in a drink will cool the drink down, but inversely, the drink will also warm the ice up, melting it until they meet in the middle at the same temperature. This property seems to be true, magically speaking, as well, because I think I can pinpoint the exact moment that started Equestria's magic crisis. Think back to Midnight Sparkle. She was tearing holes in the fabric between the worlds, allowing magic to flow from one to another. Now, Sunset fixed them, but she missed one. And we've seen that magic has been leaking out of Equestria into the human world ever since. I think this is it. We've already seen the effects this had on the human world. More magical items, more magical abilities, but this has to have an effect on Equestria too. A gradual weakening of magic. If this leak remained unaddressed, then it would continue until the worlds reached magical equilibrium. Think of it as Equestria starting out with 100% and the human world with zero. As the worlds mix, they eventually even out at 50% each. That's what I think the crisis was. Spread thin between two worlds, Equestria's magic was diluted beyond most use. Just like when Cozy Glow drained magic, ponies lost their innate magic. But this time, since Equestria still had 50%, there would always be enough for artifacts to work. This is what allowed Princess Twilight to save the day by making the crystals, restoring a semblance of innate magic. Ironic, a Twilight started this mess and a Twilight fixed it. But wait a second, if Cozy could drain 100% with six trinkets and a fancy scribble in the ground, shouldn't getting back the 50% from the human world be just as easy? Twilight wouldn't even have to unfreeze Tirek for help, because Discord knows how to make magic circles too. Ask Sombra. Well, you can't, because he's dead, but have Discord bring him back with a magic circle again and then ask Sombra. N never mind. The point is that Discord could have just patched up the tears, drained all the magic from the human world, and three days later, boom, no artifact and no sacrifice necessary. This is hypothetically possible, but I think Twilight may have had a different dilemma. That solution would work out well for Equestria, but think about how the human world would experience it. Though they weren't meant to have magic, they did seem to be enjoying it. As the human world received more and more, magic may have become a broader way of life for the humans. Restoring full magic to Equestria may have meant taking it all from them. And that's not just an inconvenience. A world without magic, having it tossed in their face, but just as they get used to it, having it stripped away? This would be an upset at best, a catastrophe at worst. Imagine the absolute chaos. Some in Equestria would see this as the necessary course of action anyway. But if I'm right, not Princess Twilight. She found a solution where everyone wins, even if it meant personal sacrifice. The worlds remain in equilibrium, but with the help of Twilight's artifacts, both humans and ponies could retain their magical ways of life. Though it may have been Twilight's best move, it's not the perfect cure-all. A consequence of this decision is that Equestria would never be able to reach the same magical heights. It would only maintain a base level of magic. Which brings us back full circle to Sunny. What once would have turned you into an alicorn now results in this instead. Still incredible and amazing, just not quite what it used to be. But that's what had to be done. What happened to Sunny Star Scout is just the future of alicorns. Or at least that's my best guess on why things are so different now. To recap, ever since Midnight Sparkle tore that crack in the base of the horse statue, equestrian magic has been slowly leaking into the human world. As the worlds approached equilibrium, ponies were losing their innate magic. But Princess Twilight didn't want to tear magic away from the humans. This prompted her to create the crystals by... Well, you'll have to watch my other video for that. And now, because of her sacrifice, both worlds live freely in magic. But what do you think? Am I right about what happened to Equestria? Why or why not? Leave your thoughts in the comments. If you liked the video, like the video. And if you want to see more, subscribe and ring the bell. If you want to support this channel financially, check out me and my sister's t-shirts on Etsy. Or you could check out my perks at patreon.com slash sawtoothwaves. And thank you so much to everyone who already has. Especially my Alicorn tier patrons. The Nameless One, Equinox3141, Cameo Shadowness, Darth Silar 12 Maximilian HG, Cyanax, Petrolhead 02, 
2, Solar Scripture, Princess Starglow, Color Shine, Ishii, Jane Shadow, and this video's Alicorn of the Week, Torn. Congrats and thanks again for everyone's support. Y'all help make this channel possible. I'm Sawtooth Waves signing out until next time. Brohoof!